Welcome back, Nighttime Nights. So during the last lesson, we talked about a couple of issues. Glare, which goes hand in hand with safety and security. Uplighting, when a light shines upwards, where we don't need or want it. Wasted light, energy, and money. And light trespass. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to evaluate and solve a lot of these issues. But first, let's do an activity. So based on what we have learned about sh light shielding, glare, light brightness, and more, we are going to do an activity where you get to decide whether you think a light fixture is acceptable or not. So I want each of you to get out a piece of paper and a pencil. And I'm going to show 10 pictures to go ahead and label your piece of paper, one through 10. And you are going to decide, is this light acceptable? So think about everything that we've learned so far. You can think about color temperature, like blue light. You can think about uh, whether a light is going where it's needed. You can think about light shielding. Just think about everything that we have learned so far. All right. So number one, is this light acceptable? So these lights are in a parking lot. And yeah, so just think about, think about everything we've learned, think about use, light shielding, glare, everything we've learned to decide if this light is acceptable. All right, number two. Are these lights acceptable? So we can see there are a bunch of lights overlooking this garage. So number three, are these lights acceptable? All right, number four. Are these lights acceptable? You can see these lights off in the distance. They are probably a field light. All right, number five, is this light acceptable? As you can see, this is lighting up a path width. So think through usefulness, light shielding, color temperature and blue light. Everything we've learned to decide, is this light acceptable? Number six, is this light acceptable? This is another field light, more up close. Um, can decide, is this light acceptable? All right, number, number seven, this is a floodlight, and we will learn more about this, this kind of light soon. Um, so go ahead and think through everything we've learned to decide, do you think this light is acceptable? All right, three more. Number eight, is this light acceptable? This is probably another pathway light. Number nine, is this light acceptable? And finally, number 10, is this light acceptable? So again, think about usefulness, light temperature, light shielding, everything. All right, so now that you have written down your answers, let's look at the real answers. So are these lights acceptable? So number one, these lights are not acceptable. They are not targeted, so they don't have a light shield. Uh, and we know this because we can, see the, we can see the light source from this picture. And they aren't controlled similar to the light shield. Um, they aren't pointed down, but also 
they aren't controlled. So that means that no one is here in this picture. Um, so these lights aren't really serving a use. Controlled means that it's not serving a use. It isn't needed during the time that this picture was taken. So these lights are probably needed at some point when there are people parking at night, but they need to be turned off when they're not being used. So that means that is what controlled means. These are not controlled because they aren't needed right now, but they're still on. And then finally, these lights are emitting a lot of blue light. So hopefully we would be able to change the color temperature. All right, number two, these lights are acceptable. So they are definitely serving a purpose above that garage and they are definitely shielded. We aren't able to see the light source. Um, and by reducing the number of these lights around the garage, there are five of them right now, but if we took away two, then we would still be able to see and we might be able to save some energy. But these lights are definitely acceptable. And to know more, like um, the color temperature of the lights and whether they are controlled, we would need to investigate more. All right, number three, these lights are not acceptable. While they are shielded, those shields are clear. So it's not doing the, it's not doing what a light shield that is not clear would be doing. So they are not targeted. They are kind of spewing light everywhere. And to learn more about these lights, we need to investigate more. But we can see that they are a warm color temperature. All right, are these lights acceptable? So these lights are not acceptable. And as you can see, we are standing pretty far away from these lights, but we can still see all the light that they are emitting. So when we are evaluating and hopefully improving a light, we need to make sure that we aren't able to see the light from far away, because that's what creates light trespass and glare. So we wanna make sure that we put a light shield on these lights, and we wanna make sure that they're not too bright for the purpose that they're serving. And finally, we wanna make sure that they are in a warm color temperature. And then also we can see all that sky glow, so all of that light that is coming out of the lights up into the night sky. So those lights are, they look like field lights, so they're supposed to be um, putting light onto the field so that players can see, but we don't want that light going up into the sky. But in this picture, you can see how much of that light is actually going upwards. All right, number four. This light is acceptable. It definitely has a shield, so it is targeted down onto the pathway that it is serving the purpose of lighting up. And we don't really know anything about the color temperature or whether it is controlled, so we would need to investigate more. Number six, is this light acceptable? This is similar to uh, number, number four from earlier, the field lights that we saw in the distance. This is a close-up picture of similar field lights, so they are not acceptable. They are trying to light up the field, and as you can see, they're kind of just going forwards instead of down. So this is a really tall pole, and so we, want, we would want those lights to be pointed downwards onto the field instead of out forward into the open air. And we do need to learn more about these lights, but typically these are floodlights, and typically floodlights have a bright white light coming from them. So we don't know for sure, but we would probably want a warmer color temperature light. All right, number seven, are these lights acceptable? So these lights are not acceptable because again, these are pointed outwards. So they're just spewing light forwards instead of being pointed down for a specific purpose. And they also have a bright white light. You can see those white rectangles. So we want to make sure that they're in a warm color temperature so that plants, animals, and humans are being exposed to light in the blue, light, blue wavelength. And again, we need to investigate more 
to learn more about the light, such as if they are serving a purpose or if they're controlled. And we also would want to look into how bright these lights are, because we don't want them to be too bright for the purpose of their serving. All right, number eight. Is this light acceptable? Yes, this light is acceptable. This light is definitely targeted, so it is a walkway light, and it is definitely pointed down into the walkway. And we can see a little bit of light coming out from underneath the cylinder right there. So we know that this light is not too bright, but again, we will need to investigate more to learn more about, more about this light. All right, number nine, is this light acceptable? No, it is not, because this light, it does serve a purpose. We can see that door right below it, but we definitely want to shield it because right now it's creating a lot of glare. And as we learn, that glare is not safe. So we want to shield it so that it is pointing down at the door instead of up into the sky. And also it is a very bright white light. So we wanna make sure that it is warm color temperature so that anyone working there or any plants and animals that are inured to this light are not being exposed to so much blue light. And finally, number 10. This light is definitely acceptable. It is shielded and pointed down, so we cannot see the light source, which is what we want to look for in all of our lights. We never want to, want to be able to see the light source looking at it from the side like we are. And it, we can kind of see a little bit of light coming from under there. It looks like it is a warm light. Um, so this is definitely an acceptable light but we would also need to investigate further to learn more about it, such as if it serves a purpose. All right, you did great on those questions. You were able to combine what we've learned about light pollution, glare, light shielding, light brightness, and so much more to figure out what makes a light fixture acceptable. So let's do a little bit more brainstorming. What should we look for in a light fixture? We want to make sure that all of our lights are safe and night sky friendly. So, what do you think makes a light fixture acceptable? Great job brainstorming! So, one of the main ways that a light creates light pollution or glare is by not being shielded. Therefore, an acceptable light is shielded and is in a place where it's needed. An acceptable light does not create glare, and it doesn't add to light pollution. On the other hand, an unacceptable light might create glare or add to light pollution, and is probably in a place where it's not really needed or wanted. It might also be shining light where it's not needed or wanted, like if it's not shielded, it might be shining light upwards. And finally, an unacceptable light might give off light in the blue wavelength, or it just might be too bright and both of those things are really unhealthy for us. All right, now that we have talked about the difference between acceptable and unacceptable outdoor light fixtures, now let's talk about how to evaluate a potentially acceptable outdoor light fixture. So we actually have five principles that help us to evaluate an outdoor light fixture. Julia, can you read the first one? I'm going to read the first principle. Useful, all light should have a clear purpose. Before installing or replacing a light, determine if light is needed. Consider how the use of light will impact the area, including wildlife and the environment. Consider using reflective paints or self-luminous markers for signs, curbs, and steps to reduce the need for permanently installed outdoor lighting. Thank you, Julia. A light should always have a purpose. A light has a purpose when it helps us see and do certain tasks. In this principle's illustrations, the light on the left is being used to illuminate the front pathway and stairs. In the right photo, there are more lights and most of them don't have a specific use. Not only do we want to save money and energy, but we also want to decrease light pollution by only having lights with a purpose. All right, William's gonna read the second principle. I'm going to read the second principle. Targeted. Light should be directed only where needed. 
Use shielding and careful aiming to target the direction of the light beam so that it points downward and does not spill beyond where it is needed. Thank you, William. A light should always be directed to the place that the light is needed. We should never be able to see a light source from beyond our own property. Just like we talked about in the previous lessons, it's really important to shield, target, or hide a light source so that we only use the necessary amount of light and we can point it where we want it. All right, Eliza is going to read the third principle. I'm going to read the third principle. Low light levels. Light should be no brighter than necessary. Use the lowest light level required. Be mindful of surface conditions, as some surfaces may reflect more light into the night sky than intended. This is another important one. So think back to the demonstration in the last video. We saw that even though the lights were very different levels of brightness, because one was targeted, it gave off the same amount of light onto the table. The brightness also affects our production of melatonin, so it is really important to select the right level of lighting. Light levels are measured in units of lumens. When choosing our light level, we want the lowest lumen level appropriate for its use. All right, Abby is going to read the fourth principle. I'm going to read the fourth principles. Control light should be used only when it is useful. Use controls such as timers or motion detectors to ensure that light is available when it is needed. Dim when possible and turn off when it is not needed. Great, thanks Abby. So lights can be really useful. However, it is important that when light sources are not being used, they are turned off. Whether this is as simple as flipping a switch or having a, most, a motion sensor for a light, it is important that our light fixtures are only on when needed. All right, Charlie is going to read our last principle. I am going to be reading the fifth principle. Color, use warmer lights where possible. Limit the amount of shorter wavelength light to the least amount needed. Thanks, Charlie. So, like we learned before, the wavelength of a light can stop our bodies from making the chemical melatonin, which helps prevent diseases. This is also true for plants and animals. Think about all the living things that live outside our houses and buildings. Those animals and plants also need to produce melatonin. If you look, if you look closely at the il illustration on the right, you can see that the white light attracts way more bugs than the yellow light on the left. Humans need to be considerate of all animals and plants by limiting the blue wavelength in our outdoor lights. When we combine the five principles, we can evaluate a potentially acceptable outdoor light fixture. This picture that we're looking at here combines the principles to change a light's effect on light pollution. As we go from left to right, more and more stars appear. Now that we have talked about the five big ways that we can evaluate a potentially acceptable outdoor light, let's look at a real life example. All right, hopefully you were able to look at this light and evaluate for yourself whether this is an acceptable light or not. So let's go through the five principles together. So principle number one, purpose. We would want to look into whether this light has a clear purpose. Principle number two, targeted. This light looks very targeted because we can't see the light source and the light is pointed towards the ground where we need the light to walk. Principle three is brightness. We would want to learn about how many lumens this light is producing and whether that amount is appropriate for its use. Principle four, controlled. We need to learn whether this light is on a timer, motion detector, or will it be turned off when it's not needed. And finally, principle five, color. We would need to look at the light source to see what color temperature the light is. Hopefully the temperature is 2700 Kelvin or less, which means that it's warm in temperature, 
so that it's emitting less light in the blue wavelength and therefore helping all the plants, animals, and humans around it. All right, now that we understand how to evaluate an outdoor lighting fixture, we're gonna play an evaluation game. And this game can be played either individually or in groups. So I'm going to show us a bunch of different lights and at each light, I want you to pause the video. And these pictures can also be found in the, in the level two activity handout sheet. So at each light, I want you to think through the five principles and figure out which ones are the problematic principles. Then for each problematic principle, I want you to think about how that light can be fixed. So for example, if a light gives off blue light, then I might say that principle five should be fixed by replacing the light bulb with a warmer colored light. All right, let's go look at those lights. Okay, so remember to pause here and think, go through each of the principles and think about which ones need to be changed and which are acceptable. Okay, so since principles one and four are unknown, um, principle two is the most problematic one. We need to extend the shields to cover up the light source. Principles three and five appear to be acceptable. Okay, hopefully you've taken a second to think through the principles. And again, principle two is problematic for this light because the shield should be replaced by a non-clear shield. Right now the light will just go right through the glass but principles three and five appear to be acceptable. So for this light, principles two and three appear to be acceptable. Unfortunately for principle five, we can't really tell what it is and same with one and four. Okay, so what do we think about this light? Again, we don't know about principles one and two, but principles two, three, and five all appear to be acceptable. So this is, a, this is definitely a light that we would wanna have outside. So for this light, principles two and three both appear to be acceptable. However, principle five, we can't really tell, we can't really see that light on inside of the shield. Okay, so this light, seems to be somewhat problematic, especially in terms of principle number two. This fixture should definitely be replaced with a shielded fixture because right now the light is being spewed through that glass. And principle three is unknown, but principle five does appear to be acceptable. Okay, so this light fixture has a quality that we don't want. We don't want to be able to see the light bulb when we're looking at the light from the side. So principle two is problematic because we need to extend the shield to cover up the light source. And principles three and five are unknown since the light is turned off right now. Okay, so for this light, principle number two, it is pretty problematic because we either need to add a shield to cover up the light source or we need to replace it with a different shielded fixture. However, principle three does appear to be acceptable and principle five is unknown. So this light fixture is pretty problematic. Um, so principle number two, we need to extend the shield to cover up the light source. Right now we can see where the light is coming from, which would definitely cause light pollution. Also, for principles number three and five, um, this light fixture, which is called a wall pack, uh, is general, they are generally too bright for their use. So we would want to look at this light when it is on to make sure that it's not too bright. Also, wall packs do not generally have warm colored lights. So we would want to look at this light when it is on and make sure that it has warm colored lights or fix either of those problems if they are a problem. All right, this is the last one. So principles number two and three both appear to be acceptable. Principle number five is unknown, but generally this seems like a pretty good light. All right, I hope you had fun today. 
See you next lesson. Bye, Nighttime Nights.